Hello, this is the surgeon of intervention on cardiologist from Tehran Heart Center presenting the case endolic type 2 transarterial embolization. Our case is a 86 year old man with history of endovascular abdominal aortic aneurysm repair EVAR about two years ago and aneurysmal sac expansion of 2 cm. You can see the arterial phase the angiography it shows the patent cover stents, iliac limbs. You can see the aneurysm, which is still it's about 10 cm. There is no endolic type 1 or type 3. When you see the venous phase or late phase of CT angiography, you can see you can see some dye extravasating the cover stents. That's uh, could be a uh, type 2 endolic. If you evaluate more the CT angiography, you can see the lumbar arteries draining into the sac could be the cause of this type 2 endolic that's the lumbar artery uh, which measured about 5 to 6 millimeter and the, in this uh, venous phase or late phase of CT angiography the endolic is seen there are five types of endolic type 1 proximal or distal graft attachment site legs type 2 retrograde flow into the aneurysm sac from the aortic side branches such as the lumbar or inferior mesenteric artery in this case we see a leak from the lumbar artery type 3 caused by a defect in the graft either due to a fabric tear or disconnection of the modular overlap type 4 graft wall porosity and type 5 increase in maximum aneurysm diameter with no identifiable endolic it is well known that endolic type 2 is a relatively frequent finding after evor in 25 to 30 percent of cases but it can be resolved spontaneously about 80 persons endolic type 2 should be treated if the aortic sac grows more than 5 millimeter in six months time there are different treatment strategies in endolic type 2 uh, one is transiliac paraendograph the second is direct sac puncture and the third is transcaval embolization and the fourth is transarterial in this strategy, when embolizing a lumbar artery, the microcatheter is advanced from the internal iliac artery to the ilio-lumbar artery to the culprit lumbar artery. Transarterial and translumbar approaches are the most commonly used. The ilio-lumbar artery originates from the posterior division of the internal iliac artery. It proceeds posteriorly and superlaterally toward the iliac fossa. Uh, however, it divides into iliac and lumbar branches. And yes, A and a called endolic type 1 and endolic type 3 should be considered and excluded when facing a suspected endolic type 2 with increasing sac size, as we did on our angiography. Selective angiography of the ipsilateral internal iliac artery supplying the endolic is seen here. You can see the ilio-lumbar artery and the lumbar artery draining into the aneurysm sac. Multiple coaxial catheter system for reliable access should be applied. As you can see, we used 6 French sheath RDC guide 55 cm and used a Cobra catheter uh, 100 cm and we used a Pilot 50 to wire the iliolumbar artery. Microcatheter echelon 14 is advanced coaxially into the aneurysm sac. You can see the microcatheter reaching to the aneurysm sac, this is a lumbar artery which drains into the aneurysm sac and we use the two coils, axion coils which are detachable 6 mm and 7 mm and afterward we injected onyx to complete occlusion of the lumbar artery and the aneurysm sac. You can see the final result when we are injecting into the iliac artery, you can see the iliac lumbar artery, you can see the coils in place and you can see the onyx which was injected into the lumbar artery. In summary, type 2 endolics continue to constitute a unique complication to endovascular aneurysm repair for which close surveillance and occasional treatment is required. Endovascular approaches are generally preferred over surgical techniques. Thanks for your watching.